A gang J Hood creative is having a contest. He wants us to show our five favorite floppy comics. And we can define favorite any way we want. It doesn't have to be your most expensive book or your personal favorite read. I will mostly go with nostalgic favorites. So I'll start with a book I'm shocked I shelled out $1.75 for as a lad, but I'm glad I did. Marvel Comics Presents number 31. I'm sure I got it for the Looney Tunes parody drawn by Eric Larson, but I fell in love with it because of the Cold Blood story. He was half cyborg with cool guns and over size shoulder pads. Very 90s. And it wasn't even the 90s yet. Next up is New Mutants 88. Yes, I did miss the first appearance of Cable. And this was the first true 90s comic I ever got, I think. I know I got it at random on a family vacation, because I had stopped buying comics at that point. But nothing reinvigorates the comic collecting impulse like long stretches of boring road on the way to the Anna Green Gables house. And again, half cyborg with cool guns and oversized shoulder pads. It, it was my jam. Ah, slightly different nostalgia. The nostalgia of being 17. I started buying back issues of the Forever People because some of them reprinted 40 Sandman comics and I was a Sandman zombie at the time, toddling around in a Sandman t-shirt and blah 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 blahing about Sandman to anyone who I could corner and I had to have anything Sandman related, which was quite a bit of stuff. But I eventually read the lead stories and they blew my mind. How is it that these old comics could be so packed with meaning? Each issue seemed to cover a different aspect of life and this one was the greatest. It was about the Freudian pact you can be trapped in if you think society is irrelevant. And I could blah 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 about this, but I already lost enough viewers when I mentioned nostalgia. And here's Uncanny X-Men 245. This was the first issue of Uncanny X-Men I found. And thank you Colossus for explaining that you're surrounded by aliens. I thought it was a stray pipe and some luggage. If it's aliens pointing guns, Rob, maybe you want to draw a white or no triggers or alien hands on those triggers, but hands aren't Rob's thing. There's four characters here, and you only see three hands, and two of them are basically mirror images of each other. But I didn't see this cover with my cynical 87-year-old eyes. I saw them with my innocent 8-year-old eyes and still sort of do. And finally, here's Uncanny X-Men 248. And I tell you, if I had started reading X-Men with this issue, I would not have continued reading it. It's such a downer, long shots of Ghost, Storm gets murdered by Havoc, but man, that Jim Lee art is just burned into my brain. Like this one, and this one. Uh, and this one. Oh. So thank you to J Hood Creative. Thank you for this contest. I'll have your link in the description and at the end of the video. I would have had this contest video done earlier, but I couldn't find the X-Men 245. I think I've talked about it in two videos, but I've never actually shown a copy. I found it at some point, but then lost it again, so I had to rebuy it this weekend. Variety boxes filled with random crap are great if you just want to browse through some comics, waste some time. But they are insanity-inducing if you are trying to find a specific book.